Thanks everyone for coming back for another segment of the MCR. My name's TJ. Please like, share, and subscribe. We're on multiple uh, platforms. We're on multiple social media sites. And uh, just thanks everyone for your support. I know it's been a few days, but I am compelled to throw in my two cents on uh, what I'm referring to as Brandon, President Brandon's red speech. And I'll explain why I'm calling it that. But uh, there's been some commentary, some fallout, some aftermath, and, uh, you know, I guess I'm compelled to throw in my two cents, too. Right off the bat, I had to wonder, what's up with the red? And if you've watched it from the very beginning, the red just kept getting redder, and it got darker and darker to the point of uh, uh, some kind of crimson red color and as I was watching this that's when the thought popped into my mind what is up with this Game of Thrones excrement and what I mean by Game of Thrones if you're uh, if you were a fan or a faithful watcher or familiar with Game of Thrones there was a scene called The Red Wedding in which the protagonist, Rob Stark, you had, uh, it was a massacre, the massacre of Rob Stark, his wife, his mother, and his men, at what was called the Red Wedding. And just prior to the massacre being executed, uh, you had this melancholy song, The Reigns of Castamere. And basically, uh, that song would later be become associated with doom and gloom and and uh, and, and the Red Wedding was uh, often referred to as you know uh, since it was a massacre uh, obviously was not something good well what we got here with President Brandon is this red speech and I just I, I just couldn't believe I couldn't believe the red now they are saying that Independence Hall, because that's where the speech took place, there's some irony there, I would tell you, but if you did a, 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 a further out a shot of Independence Hall, you would have seen that the uh, left and right outer edges of the building were blue and that the inner portion was red, but because they did a close-up of President Biden during the speech, all you saw was the red. And, and I'll just keep saying again and again, if you watch it from the very beginning, and I think it was a lighting issue, uh, you know, as they kind of dimmed the lights as he began to speak, that, that red just became a satanic crimson red. And what really struck me as being odd is you get these two shadowy figures appear from around, around the doorway and it's Jill Biden taking President Biden by the hand and and they appear as shadowy figures then they move into a spotlight so you can see them and then the, it's like they go back into the shadow so again now you're seeing two shadowy figures and then as they approach and and uh, kind of uh, ascend to the platform there uh, they come back into the spotlight okay and I just thought this is you know what didn't look professional and it looked weird as all get out in the meantime the red just kept getting redder it just it you know uh, going to I know I'm rambling but I just I was just struck at the crimson red add to the weirdness of it all was the two Marines standing there they were at a position of attention they saluted President Biden as he passed them by they, were, they went back to the position of attention, and then they took what I thought was a very odd position, a, I'm going to refer to as a modified position of parade rest. Now, parade rest is when, uh, uh, you know, because of the tension, your, your legs are together and you're standing uh, straight, uh, erect, okay, at attention. When parade rest, you kind of have your legs shoulder width apart, and your hands are, the thumbs are, your hands are behind your back with your thumbs interlocked, okay? 
and that's called parade rest. But the Marines, instead of having their hands behind their back, had their hands in front of them. <clears throat> and you know, I was talking to Mac about that because I thought it was a very odd position. And Mac told me that uh, he's seen in police formations police officers assume that position as opposed to behind the back. So I, I you know, I, I have to assume the Marines were instructed to assume this position, but uh, I'll tell you what, when I was in a formation, I never had my hands in front of me. If I went to parade rest, my hands were behind my back. Now, giving credit where credit's due, those Marines were, they, they looked pretty sharp. And I'm sure they're bona fide badasses. Uh, and something people don't understand is they stayed in that position the entire time of the uh, Biden speech. And it's hard. It's hard to stand in one position and not move, whether it be even standing at parade rest for that long. Ain't easy. Okay? And, uh, uh, it's, it's just hard to stand there motionless for that duration. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, you know, I'll, I got, I'll give credit where credit's due. I am a little curious how, how the Marines were selected. One appeared to be a Sergeant E-5, the one on the left. The one on the right, I couldn't quite make out his rank. I don't know if it was a corporal or a private. I couldn't see how many stripes was on his sleeve. Uh, but the one on the left, uh, it, it appeared to be an E5 sergeant, and I'm just, I'm just, I was, I'm just curious whether they volunteered or if they were tasked or, or tasked from a, 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 a pool of volunteer. You know what? I'm just kind of curious how those two were selected. That's all. So, so begins President Biden's rant, his diatribe, his whatever you want to call it. He begins with, we the people, just like how our Constitution begins. And I found that hypocritical, that he would begin his speech with the very words that our Constitution begin with, the, the very document that, that they, uh, they have such disdain for. And then he commenced into MAGA this and MAGA that and on and on, I, uh, repeatedly uh, in one fashion or another, using the using the uh, term MAGA, M-A-G-A, how they were such a threat to democracy, they were a clear and present danger, and, and you know, clear and present danger, <clears throat> you know, that's the type of phrase a leader might use to to uh, uh, justify a course of military action taken against an opponent. So, so he's going to justify uh, using the term clear and present danger to take action against us. He proceeds with a list of uh, <coughs> accusations, you know, calling us extremists. If you go to a Trump rally, you're an extremist. If you want low gas prices, you're an extremist. If you're a Second Amendment advocate, you're an extremist. If you believe uh, there were electoral anomalies in 2020, you're an extremist. If you don't believe in climate change, you're an extremist. If you don't vote Democrat, you're obviously an extremist. You know, that was the text of Brandon's obscenities, I would tell you. He did say a couple things I would agree with. <clears throat> like at one point he mentions, we're in a battle for the soul of this country. Yeah, you better believe we're in a battle for the soul of this country. And then uh, towards towards the end of his speech, he says, he, he gives instructions to, to his group. Speak out, get engaged, and vote, vote, vote. Well, I'd be inclined to agree, yeah, vote one time. But I guess he was telling his people to vote and vote and vote some more. I, I don't know. Speak out, get engaged, and vote, vote, vote. Those were his words. I don't know if he meant for them to vote three times or what, but that's what he said. And then, if all this nauseating 
rant of his wasn't enough. He ended with what I took to be a very hypocritical, blasphemous ending. And he says, And may God protect our nation. And may God protect all those that stand watch over our democracy. God bless you all. You know, Democrats have such disdain for God. You know, they, they revere Satan more than God. If, and we did a segment on that. Okay? But after he was done with his speech, I couldn't believe what I saw next. A, a, I'll say brief make-out session with his wife on stage. Okay? And, uh, and then, just as like when they entered she would take him by the hand and just as they just like as they entered as they descend from the stadium they they move back into the shadows only to reappear in another spotlight and then again to enter into another shadow and what you see are two shadowy figure figures exiting what stage left maybe i i i think that's what it's called exiting to the left two shadowy figures exiting to the left. <clears throat> I will give President Biden this much. He did salute the Marines as he passed him, and that's look, that looks what they what he did, because as, as he approached, the Marines went from, from their modified position of parade rest to attention, then, then saluted him. And uh, it did appear that he saluted them. So, you know, thank goodness for that much, I guess. You know, because that, 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 that would irritate me. Uh, and that, that was the gist of the speech. It was a political rant. And from what I understand, uh, the, the only stations that really carried it was uh, MSNBC, CNN, I think maybe Fox did. I, I, I don't know if Fox did or not. Uh, I know like ABC, NBC, CBS, it appears they didn't bother carrying the speech because... They knew it was going to be a political rant and not a formal address to the nation. Uh, you know, the leftists loved it. The MAGA crowd obviously hated it. The political center seemed to be concerned. And they seemed to be most concerned with the crimson red because it was that red. Okay? It just, I'm telling you, that crimson red made no sense at all. <clears throat> uh, and how did Trump respond? Well, typical Trump. He responded that following Saturday, this past Saturday, with a rally in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, just a couple hours north of Philadelphia Independence Hall. And from my understanding, the same area where some days prior, Biden himself had a rally, and Biden had difficulty filling a high school gymnasium. Whereas when Trump had his rally, uh, the, the report was, and I did not see an exact figure, but they said the venue was full the parking lot to the venue was overflowing, indicating thousands in attendance. And President Trump spoke for, I guess, two hours, which is three to four times as long as, uh, as Biden's little rant uh, in his red speech. So there's your comparison. And at the Trump rally, he had uh, Doug Mastriano, who's running for governor, Dr. Oz, you know, on again, off again Oz, I'll tell you, uh, the Senate candidate, and then a man by the name of Jim Bognate. Uh, I guess he's a representative candidate. And one of our favorites, uh, you know, one of our MAGA favorites, Marjorie Taylor Greene was there, and she spoke also. So that was good. We're extremists, and, uh, you know... So in closing, I'll, uh, I'll repeat the words of President Brandon. Speak out, get engaged, and vote. One time. Not three times. As always, be safe. Watch your six. 
and don't tread on me.